Hello, how are you? My name is Robert, and from now on I thank you for watching this video, in which I'm going to explain what is the input impedance of a multimeter, the implications of a high or low input impedance in a measuring instrument, as well as what ghost voltages are and how to detect them. Therefore, if you are an electrical installer or maintenance technician and you are measuring voltages frequently, this video may be useful for you. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. When we use a multimeter or a voltmeter to measure a voltage in a circuit, we must place the test leads between the two points where we want to know the existing voltage, that is, we connect the voltmeter in parallel with the installation or with the circuit in the which we are going to measure its voltage. This ultimately implies that the voltmeter will interact in some way with the circuit, for example, if it is an analog voltmeter, the voltage to be measured will act on the coil that supports the instrument needle, and if it is a digital multimeter, the measured voltage will act on the multimeter's internal amplifiers. This interaction causes a certain current to flow through the test leads, which will depend precisely on the input impedance of the voltmeter. To some extent, the voltmeter is going to behave like a load connected to the circuit under test. Therefore, we can define the input impedance of the voltmeter, called the input zeta, as the impedance perceived by the circuit to which the voltmeter is connected. If for simplicity we consider the resistive part of the impedance and disregard other aspects associated with the input impedance, such as the input capacitance, etc., the input resistance will be given by the relationship between the voltage at the test leads and the current drawn from the circuit by the voltmeter. Here we can see a typical circuit of an analog voltmeter with four different voltage ranges. In this case the input impedance can vary from 10 mega ohms, that is, 10 million ohms when the voltmeter is in the 500 volt range, to only 20,000 ohms in the 1 volt range. On the other hand, we see that the Fluke 87V digital multimeter in its specifications indicates an input impedance of 10 mega ohms, that is, 10 million ohms for normal functions of measurement of direct and alternating voltages. Let's now look at the influence of the input impedance in a simple circuit. Let's suppose the circuit that we see in the image made up of a DC voltage source V, of 12 volts, and two resistors in series, R1, of 10 kilo ohms, and R2, of 2 kilo ohms. Ohm's law, theoretically indicates that for these conditions in R1, there is a voltage drop of 10 volts and in R2, there is a voltage drop of 2 volts, and the current supplied by the battery will be 1 milliamp. Let's now measure the voltage between the ends of R2, with two voltmeters, one with an input impedance of 10 mega ohms and the other with an input impedance of only 10 kilo ohms. In the first case we will have the following equivalent circuit. Again we apply Ohm's law, which predicts that the voltage between points A, and B, is equal to 1.99 volts, and the current supplied by the battery is practically 1 milliamp. Let us now consider the second multimeter with an input impedance of 10 kilo ohms. In this case, Ohm's law predicts that the voltage between points A, and B, is 1.71 volts, and the current supplied by the battery will be approximately 1.03 milliamps. As we can see, the voltage between points A, and B, when using the voltmeter with an impedance of 10 kilo ohms, has been reduced by almost 0.3 volts, which represents more than 14% in relation to the voltage measured with the voltmeter of 10 mega ohms, and the current to be supplied by the battery has also increased a bit. We see in this way that the lower the impedance of a multimeter, the greater the impact it has on the circuit, altering the value of the voltage that the circuit has when the voltmeter is not applied. For this reason, in sensitive electronic circuits it is important to use multimeters with a high input impedance, to avoid altering the electronic signals. For electrical distribution systems, the effect of using a voltmeter with a low input impedance is negligible, that is the reason why in many electrical distribution cabinets we find analog voltmeters that generally have a low input impedance. On the other hand, when we look at the technical specifications of another multimeter, the Fluke 289, we see that two different impedances appear. On the one hand, the typical impedance of 10 mega ohms appears for the measurement of direct and alternating voltages, and on the other hand, an impedance of 3.2 kilo ohms appears for the measurement of alternating voltage associated with a function called LOZ. 
This name of LOZ comes from low zeta, that is, low impedance. If we look at multimeter fluke 289 we will see precisely that on the rotary knob we can select this LOZ function. Although, as we see, the fluke 114, 116 and 117 multimeters also have that LOZ function. In the specifications of these multimeters we see that the input impedance in that low impedance LOZ mode is also about 3 kilo ohms. Let's now see a short video, where we are going to measure precisely that input resistance of the Fluke 87V, and Fluke 289 multimeters. To do this, we first use the 87V as a resistance meter and connect its test leads to the voltage input of the Fluke 289. As we can see, the 87V, shows a resistance of about 11 mega ohms when we have activated the DC voltage measurement function, and of about 3 kilo ohms when we have the LOZ function on the the Fluke 289, that is the low impedance mode. We can also repeat the test and measure the input resistance of the 87V. To do this, we now configure the Fluke 289 for the measurement of resistance, and the 87V, in voltage measurement mode, and in this way we verify that the input resistance of the 87V, in direct voltage mode is about 11 mega ohms. Both results coincide with the data seen in the technical specifications of those multimeters. So, if we have commented that the higher the input impedance of the multimeter, the less it will distort the voltage measurement in a circuit, then, why do these multimeters include a voltage measurement mode with an impedance as low as 3 kilo ohms? The objective is to discriminate between real voltages and ghost voltages in an electrical installation. Sometimes, when we have cables without voltage running alongside cables that are in operation inside the electrical distribution ducts, this can create a kind of capacitor between the cable without voltage and the cable in operation, so we say that a capacitive coupling effect can occur between those cables, which gives rise to the appearance of a voltage in the non-powered cable. This induced voltage is what is known as a ghost voltage. In these circumstances, if we use a high impedance multimeter, of for example 10 mega ohms, it is likely that the multimeter, considering the little current it draws from the cable, shows a high voltage value that can be around 80% of the voltage of the cable in operation under a real voltage. For example, for a 230 volt system we could have a ghost voltage of 180 volts, which can undoubtedly make a maintenance technician think that he or she is dealing with an energized cable and therefore get confused and waste a valuable time in case he or she is performing any maintenance work. This situation can appear in open fuses or protections, in unused cables installed for future needs, in systems with disconnected grounds, etc. How can you determine if a voltage is a real voltage or just a ghost voltage? The solution is simple, if we are facing a ghost voltage, when applying a small load, the voltage will drop, while if it is a real voltage in an electrical distribution circuit, a small load will not influence the voltage. In the past, technicians used solenoid-type voltage testers, which have a very low input impedance, typically less than 10 kilo ohms, but often as low as 1 kilo ohm. In this way, this small load applied to a ghost voltage caused the voltage to drop, and the technician knew in that way that it was a ghost voltage. These devices have given way to more efficient, versatile and accurate electronic testers such as the Fluke T150 bipolar tester, with an input impedance of 200 kilo ohms. Returning to multimeters such as the Fluke 289, or the Fluke 117, we now know why they have a function for measuring low impedance voltage, the LOZ function, precisely to be able to detect ghost voltages in electrical installations. In this way, these instruments combine the advantage of high impedance voltage measurement both in electrical installations and in sensitive electronic circuits, as well as low impedance voltage measurement, LOZ for the detection of ghost voltages and thus avoid the possibility of false readings or errors in the absence or presence of voltage tests. In this way, with a single instrument, both tests can be performed. But, what if our multimeter does not have this low impedance voltage measurement function? In this case, the Fluke SV225 adapter can be used together with the multimeter, 
which can be coupled to the multimeter's voltage inputs in order to reduce the input impedance when measuring voltage. In this way, with any standard multimeter we can discriminate between real voltages and ghost voltages. On the other hand, if we divide 230 volts by 3000 ohms, which is an approximate value for the input impedance and low impedance mode, we will have a result of about 76 milliamps, and this means that if we measure the voltage between phase and ground, I repeat, between phase and ground, in this low input impedance mode, the instrument will derive those 76 milliamps between phase and ground, which will trigger a 30 milliamp residual current device, called RCD. Therefore, we must take these circumstances into account to avoid an unpleasant surprise. And so we have reached the end of this presentation. In this way we have seen what the input impedance of a multimeter is, the implications of a high or low input impedance in circuits, as well as what ghost voltages are and how to detect them. I hope this video has been of interest and helps you on a practical level when you have to make measurements of voltages. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if this video has been interesting for you, don't forget to drop a like, so that I can know that you liked it, and I can program new videos on this topic. In future videos we will see more aspects related to measuring instruments, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon.